Hi everyone. Welcome to this next session of Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q Blast. My name is Dr. Matt Alvin. I'm an incoming medical intern going into radiology. Let's get started. So for this question, we've got a 21-year-old man with a history of schizophrenia. Okay, notice that that's bolded there because that should jump out to you and be like, young guy, schizophrenia. Gets your mind primed, ready to go for what you're going to read. Notice this is a long question, longer than ones we've seen before, but that's why you notice I've bolded some key things. That's what you have to do in your own mind on test day. So we got this young guy, schizophrenia, brought to the emergency department by his mom because of the acute onset of neck stiffness. He says his neck has been locked to the right for the last hour. Notice how I bolded hour. Anytime we're talking about schizophrenia, those psychiatric disorders where there's some type of complication, like this neck stiffness, got to figure out how long has it been going on for, hours, days, months, years. So this guy, only for an hour, he's got this neck stiffness, unable to move it. Physical exam, he's anxious, he's diaphoretic, meaning he's sweating a lot. His pulse is 120 per minute, so definitely tachycardic. His upper body and neck are rigid. His neck's locked in flexion, rotated to the right. A review of his records shows that treatment with haloperidol was begun when? When? Four days ago. That's an important thing to take away from this. Not a year ago, but four days ago. And he said he took an additional dose three hours ago, very, very recently, in order to control his auditory hallucinations. So which of the following best describes the physical findings in this patient? So again, long question, but biggest takeaway is schizophrenia, neck stiffness for an hour, and it happened right in the time frame when he took this extra level of medication, haloperidol, which we know has extra perimeter side effects, a high incidence of them. So what describes the physical findings in this guy? So we've got choice A, akathisia, choice B, dystonia, choice C, neuroleptic malignant syndrome, choice D, Parkinsonism, and choice E, tardive dyskinesia. Take a few moments, think this over, and select an answer. Okay, the correct answer here is B, dystonia. So some key points to remember about dystonia, the time frame, it occurs within five days of starting a new antipsychotic medication, not months, not years, days. It's defined as a sustained muscle contraction causing twisting, repetitive movements, or abnormal postures. So in this case, we've got torticollis where the neck is kind of impinged over to the right, so flexed like this, like I'm doing. The oculogyra crisis, which I can't really do, where the eyes are deviated one way or to the other, sustained muscular contraction. So the patient's just looking one way. And then the final one, aphisthetonic crisis, is kind of where you see the stretched out like this and all of their, their limbs are extended. They can't really move whatsoever. Really bad place to be in. So some high yield takeaways from this. Number one, know that dystonia, very common complication in neuroleptic therapy. This guy, schizophrenic on neuroleptic therapy to control it. Dystonia, very common side effect. How do we treat this guy? We give him an anticholinergic, such as benzotropine, or an antihistamine drug with anticholinergic activity, such as diphenhydramine. Those are the two most common answers you're gonna see come test day. Be aware of them. Think about the other types of movements, those other answer choices. How do we differentiate between them? Time frames, symptoms, gotta keep those in mind, okay? So it's a great question. Take a lot from this. Go off and study background on schizophrenia. Thanks for joining me today in Kaplan's USMLE Step 1 Q Blast. I'm Dr. Matt Alvin, and I'll see you next time.